and now we are live. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Thank Olga. Our conversation with <laughs> David, we, we are so happy to have you again. Uh, David, I had fantastic conversations with you um, before. And for those who don't know David's uh, teaching and life path, I really want you to do research during his Facebook page. He has a lot of wonderful content that you really enjoy. And today, I thought it would be great, uh, David, if we have conversation about the subject that I think so valuable especially in today's environments we have election coming up we have so many different conflicts on social media that i can observe every day arguments it feels like people have compassion fatigue don't you find it that sometimes it feels like all signs pointing it's compassion fatigue <laughs> mm. um david tell me what is your work in bringing compassion to everyday routine of every human being no matter what state of awareness a person has uh whether they had experience that we were so blessed to have you me and many other people the experience of awakening the, the experience of seeing beyond body mind what what is that that you can share that is relevant well my work centers on the idea and the experience that, that there's really one of us, we share, we are all connected, we share one mind, and that uh, the belief in separation has projected out a world of differences, but, but the, the core disturbance is in the in mind, in consciousness. So everything that I work with is on healing the consciousness, healing the mind, and then seeing the world in a way where you radiate the love that's already inside of you to everyone and everything. So compassion is a very interesting uh, topic because a lot of times there are many, many spiritualities that, that will say you need to have compassion towards ignorance and compassion towards suffering and compassion towards uh, conflict and so forth. And from my teachings, it's that you must find the source of the conflict, of the suffering, of the all uh, differences in mind and consciousness before you can truly extend love. So if you believe that, that you are not a part of the suffering, but you still perceive other people suffering, I would say you are deluded, you are mistaken, because you can't even perceive conflict and perceive suffering unless you actually believe it. It's unconscious. Usually the mind is not aware of, of how deep the beliefs uh, in ego are rooted. But if you are perceiving the suffering and trying to act compassionately, it's going to be a very difficult struggle and it will bring fatigue and it will bring like a burnout that you mentioned because in one sense, uh, you're saying, I'm perceiving it, I have nothing to do with it, but I'm going to send love to it. And uh, if you're perceiving it, you believe it. You actually already do believe it. And so really, as soon as you perceive the conflict and the suffering in whatever, in politics or in uh, different cultures and so on and so forth, then you have to come back inside and say, I need healing in my perception to actually experience the love that's in my heart. So it's quite, it's quite a, a journey to clear, clear the consciousness completely. What difficulties did you uh, did or do experience in relation to compassion? Because, you know, in the interaction between human beings, sometimes so many triggers can happen. And um, as, I, as I listen, a lot of other people who had experiences of awakening, uh, the, the, the body-mind awareness still, still exists even after the experience itself, as the intensity of it subsides for a lot of people, probably for majority of people. The reconstruction into the ego happens, and it's almost, I, I see in my world, the intensity of experiences of emotion became much stronger before the experience itself happened. It seems like 
the, because we, we became more open to, to feeling everything that the body is there to feel, you almost feel even most, more, I cannot say suffering per se, but the, the pains of the emotions that are perceived to be painful, you feel it stronger. And I can, can see that it's relevant to a lot of other people. I, yesterday, I just, I just listened to some um, Adishanti conversation and some other uh, teachers and sages. It feels like it's it's very common denominator, I don't know how it's in your world, that the, after the experience of awakening, the experience that of the unified consciousness, when you get reintegrated as a human being per se, <laughs> or perceived to be such, the emotions become almost stronger. They're not disappearing. People have this imagination that maybe some cases, I don't know, it's not my situation. I cannot, I cannot share it because there's no experience on my end that there is something happening to your emotional world when everything becomes this nirvana and peace. No, you just have different relationship with emotions. But the experience of suffering then become not so personal any longer. You don't, you don't suffer, you, you, you feel the pain, yet there is not this existential suffering or depression or believing in the emotions any longer. There is observer to that. But through suffering, of our own, as we experience it, it's much easier to come back to relating to other beings that go through their own struggle, isn't it so? Well, I think there are many pathways to awakening, but I would say a purely awake mind does not suffer at all, ever. Uh, there's not an observer of the suffering, it's just there is no suffering. Because actually spirit or love or oneness doesn't create any kind of conflict or suffering. It all it always comes from ego. So when people say I'm I'm I had an awakening experience, they maybe had a glimpse right. of something. They had a glimpse of the divine, we'll say, but they didn't they didn't actually fully awaken from the ego. If if the suffering or even the perception of suffering comes back, uh, even if they're observing the suffering, it's still there is no suffering in God. So I actually studied A Course in Miracles, which is from Jesus Christ, and there, here we have a totally awake being, someone who, who seemingly was on the cross, and he basically had blood coming from his limbs, and he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do in a calm way. He, he actually did not have any pain on the cross. Uh, a lot of times people in this day and age, they see people that can use the power of their mind to walk across hot coals and not feel pain, or they even walk across hot coals and their feet don't even get burned. Well, this was Jesus Christ. He had transcended. He doesn't need hypnotism. He had actually reached the point where he, he saw the ego wasn't real and death wasn't real. And so we had a man who seemed to come back after he was buried, dead and buried, just as another witness to say, actually, death and pain and suffering aren't real. They would have nothing to do with a loving spirit, a loving source, a loving oneness that we truly are. Now, this takes a lot of mind training, so I would say that for most people, uh, what they do is they are continually having things pop up from the unconscious mind that, that are little threads of darkness. Uh, still the belief in death, it's a, it's a death wish that's still in the mind, and it's all suffering comes from still holding on and protecting a death wish in the mind. So, what it is, is I would say like relationships, anytime we perceive an external world, somehow that the world is outside of us, instead of just uh, unified in, we'll call it the unified field, unified awareness, the quantum field, that's all an awareness that everything is completely connected and there's nothing inside or outside. Most human beings perceive an external world and even if you are having a happy day and a mosquito comes along and bites you on the arm and you feel a little irritated at the mosquito bite, there's still an antagonism with what seems to be the skin. And you feel it emotionally. Uh, you get irritated, you get annoyed, you get itchy. And even that is still ego. Uh, even a, a mos perceiving a, an irritation with a mosquito bite. Uh, because any form of irritation and annoyance or upset, even the tiniest upset is still 
saying that ego is still rooted in the mind, in consciousness, and it has to be transcended. So I would say I work with everybody into the sense of don't try to get into mental games of, of, of perceiving suffering and trying to detach yourself from the suffering. As long as it's in your awareness, whether it's a mosquito bite or a little fatigue and discomfort, uh, tightness in the body or a little bit of worry or anxiety or whatever, don't fool yourself into thinking um, I can just try to detach from that or push it away. It's coming up into awareness for a reason to be released. And we're here to release every scrap of discomfort so that we can truly live a joyful, uh, happy, radiant life, you know, full of love extending. That's really what we're all going for. And, and it, it does take a lot of uh, discipline. I'm not trying to kid anybody by saying they can just twinkle their nose or click their fingers or put their heels together like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz and just keep clicking their heels together. I, and I'm not saying it's magic. You know, we can use it in a magical way. It, it takes prayer and meditation and a real willingness to, uh, to not hold on to any sense of personal identification.